Hello and welcome to this Radio.co webinar all about how to grow your audience where we're going to explore not only all the places that you can place your radio station on for people to obviously find, listen and enjoy it, uh, but also tips on how to promote your radio station in order for hopefully people liking it extending the life and longevity of your uh, station and ultimately getting your station to the heights that you can only dream of. My name is uh, Phil Dean and I am the Customer Success Manager at Radio.co. Hello, I'm Lucy. I'm a content producer here at Radio.co. Me and Lucy, we're going to take you on a kind of like a journey of sorts. You know, we're going to take you from that initial radio station concept or perhaps you know the actual station you've launched um, you know making it available to listen to making it available for people to find how you can promote and grow your audience and then a couple of like yeah do's and don'ts based on our own experiences and also experiences we've learned along the way from some of our broadcasters um after our discussion you know along this the journey that will take you on we are going to be looking at a couple of um, I guess success and unsuccessful stories from some of our broadcasters you know that have been in touch with us already so thank you very much for uh, for writing to us on those so the first thing we're going to discuss Lucy is you know imagine yourself you know you've got your brand new radio station ready to rock you know you've loaded all your content up you built your shows maybe you've got some of your DJs on board now how can people actually find that station? Where are we going to put your station on so people can ultimately listen and hopefully enjoy it? Yeah, Phil, good question. Um, well, I think the first port of call might be actually having a personal website. Mm -hmm. um, so you might have one set up already or you might decide to set one up with a kind of website builder like Wix or Squarespace or so, which are kind of very user-friendly. And the crucial bit here is obviously that any people you direct to your website have access to the radio station on mm -hmm. it. And it's not just your website. So you could either embed a stream link or a pop out web player. Mm -hmm. You could um, put links to any internet directories that your radio station is listed on. And if you have your own app, you could also put a link to the Google Play Store or the Apple Store to download the app. Yeah, so, so I guess a, a website I like to describe, it's, it's kind of like a nice little headquarters, per se, for your station. Yeah. It's a good way of directing people to not only a location where they can find your radio station, but, you know, where they can find other outlets. So, as you mentioned, things like mobile apps, which, which we'll touch on in a moment, um, even things like smart speaker skills, again, what we'll mention very, very shortly, um, but also things that are outside of the actual radio station itself, like... Mm -hmm biography pages you know everyone likes mm. to know who they're listening to not just what they're listening to so having like a little bio page maybe um you know it's also great for advertisers or competitions yeah. you know it's, it's just a nice place to direct people to so you know potentially having your own online radio station with your own domain name and therefore your own brand it's a good way of just showing people instantly even just from a front page this is what we are this is what we do and uh yeah stick around so so having a good website is um you know, it's a good place to start. But a question I do get asked a lot in, in regards to websites is, I guess I can relate to this, I'm not a website developer at all. Are there alternatives to potentially building a website? Is there something else I can use instead? Yeah, I would actually say a really great alternative would be to potentially set up a Facebook page mm. for your um, radio station. If you've ever kind of Googled a business or a radio station or a company or so, you might have had their Facebook page come up as their first result if they don't have a website. Mm. And the Facebook page usually just functions like a mini website. And a lot of people are very comfortable using Facebook. It's dead easy to use, obviously. And in that, you can put all the same information that you would do your own personal website. Mm. So you can put information about the radio station. You can put links to how, how people can listen to it. You can put your schedule up. And then also, if you set up a Facebook, Facebook page, um, you open yourself up to stuff like Facebook advertising mm -hmm. and other benefits that Facebook offers as well. So Lucy, personal question for you. How often are you, I guess, downloading apps or using things that are exclusively just on your mobile phone? Well, I guess entertainment-wise. Yeah, I use um, I use apps quite a lot just because they're often very, they're kind of the more slick, user-friendly way of kind of using a service or kind of a product or so rather than having to do it all in your browser mm -hmm. and having 500 little windows open on your browser i mean i still have probably about 70 but i try and try and shimmy over to an app where possible yeah so if you've got if you've got you know lots of listeners or that want just like a quick very kind of easy way to listen into your radio station where they can just it's literally the click of a button then an app's a really great way of doing that also yeah and i found as well like having like an app is, is a bit 
dare I say, trendy, I guess, for, for a station. It is trendy, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool, isn't it? Because <laughs> yeah. um, I, I found, um, particularly from, from uh, personal experience, you know, if you're doing a podcast or a radio station and you want to do a call to action, you know, a call to action, you know, is, is visit our website or give us a review or something like that. Having something like a mobile app is a much more appealing thing and people are, are much quicker to respond to downloading an app, even though it takes arguably a lot more actions and clicks to actually download and open something than it is just visit a website. But it's because, you know, we're so used to just downloading things specifically for our mobile phones. You know, you may find that having an app can be incredibly beneficial for you because it provides more accessibility, more efficiency for those using it. Because at the end of the day, you are launching an internet radio station in an age where we are all glued to our mobile phones more than we are to our computers. So having something that is just purposely built for your station from a mobile phone is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hugely beneficial. So it's something you should definitely consider. And you can, you know, uh, build, again, mobile apps through radio.co. That's why we offer that service because it's something that we found is, yeah, hugely, hugely beneficial. Uh, and then again, kind of on that topic is the rise and the reign of, um, well, smart speakers. Um, yeah. So any, have you got any particular insight into smart devices, particularly like smart speakers and sort of how they've, kind of benefited from from online radio? I certainly do, yes. So smart speaker um, ownership is actually on the up. And we've got research both from America, from the um, Edison Research, (laughs) the Infinite Dial Report, and we've got research from Radio, which both shows that more and more adults in both the States and in the UK are now in possession of a smart speaker and more and more people are using smart speakers to listen to internet radio and to listen to other forms of audio. So they are kind of like muscling in a little bit, they're taking a bit more of the market, they're kind of like this is how, this might be the future of how people continue to listen to audio. It's definitely seeing a bit more of a dip from traditional ways Mm. such as FM the um, FM and AM uh, transmitter, for example. Yeah. You know, traditional listening to radio isn't going anywhere, but the, the way of smart speakers especially is, is growing at a, you know, at a huge, huge rate very, very quickly. So, you know, having a smart speaker just enables a lot more accessibility in your station in a way that is, na- I guess, naturally progressing with the way of the world. Yeah. I guess like a lot more people are finding things like smart speakers just as essential as a TV in their front room or a fridge in their kitchen. You know, having something like a smart speaker in the corner of a sitting room, you know, it's just a natural addition, you know, so I can listen to my favorite radio stations and change the light bulbs with it. So, uh, yeah, it's it's something it's something you should definitely consider. Again, you can build smart speakers through us. That's why we're giving you this accessibility, um, you know, because it's a huge growing trend and it's not seeing uh, any dipping down anytime soon um you know what you can get available is obviously alexa skills google home devices they're the main ones that people have in their homes and uh yeah it's definitely the way of the world with online radio and it should be something you uh, should consider to, to help you get on there to so kind of dive into a little bit more of what exactly is a an internet radio directory yeah so inter- internet radio directories are essentially they're kind of like these platforms that are like big libraries of all loads of radio stations from you know, kind of very kind of mainstream kind of commercial radio stations like Absolute Radio to uh, the community radio station that might be broadcasting down the end of your street. Yeah, and I guess some of these internet radio directories, they have their own, you know, official apps or skills again. So, you know, as I mentioned, a lot of people listen to stations through TuneIn or uh, another good way of getting your station uh, through a third party provider is things like Deezer, you know, making your podcast or radio station available on there, opening up the app even on like Sonos smart speakers and things um you know radio garden is another one as well that a lot of people like to use so there's these are places that are ultimately sort of great for making your station available because the key to using internet radio directories is you really want to make your station as available as possible Mm -hmm. you know in hopes of more people in the most polite sense stumbling upon it you know really so you know there's no need to make a station available on you know, hundreds and hundreds of them and then direct people to a big list of everywhere they can mm-hmm. find your station. The idea is you just want to make your station easier to find in the hopes of if someone Googles the name of your station or I guess something similar, you know, a lot of those results on that first Google page are, you know, your station linking to your Facebook page or a streamer page or things like that. Um, so that kind of covers it for in terms of where you can make your station available, but it's all about to, um, 
I guess sort of making your station known, you know, how do you shout out um, about it really? So, you know, your station is available to stream, you know, again, imagine Lucy, your station is ready to rock. Um, so how are you ultimately going to tell people that it exists? Because social media might not really be everyone's cup of tea, mine included, it's something I don't use a huge amount of time. Um, but I can't deny how vital it is to really promoting your uh, your online radio station. After all, I mentioned this before, there's no better way to promote an internet radio station than by attracting people who are currently at that moment in time using the internet. You know, that's how it ultimately works. You want to drag people in through social media because chances are a lot of your audience are currently on it, on their phones or the computers and such. So, Lucy, do you mind giving us like a rundown on, um, I guess, the most popular platforms and how they may best be used in, in the realm of, you know, promoting your online radio station? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's obviously first worth pointing out that different platforms kind of get can get different demographics of users. But let's start with the big giant, which is obviously still Facebook. And Facebook is kind of very beneficial to internet relations in the sense that it has so many strings to its marketing bow. Like whatever you want to do on Facebook, you can kind of do it in, mm. in the realm of social media. Um, and so as we mentioned before, you could set up a page and so that functions as like a mini website you can you have the option to go live on Facebook if you wanted to broadcast a particular event that's happening at your radio station or kind of show everyone the radio station working in real time um, so the next one I'll probably talk about is Instagram so Instagram uh, to start with was essentially just a way that where people would upload an image and um, you can't upload anything else. And, and at the start of Instagram, you couldn't upload anything else. It was just an image. So rather than Twitter, which is very word-based, this is just like, oh, you know, we're just going to let you have a, you know, upload images in a typical square format. Mm -hmm. um, it has developed quite a bit since its birth. And now it has all sorts of different kind of features and stuff which um, people can take advantage of. So it has, it has reels, it has... Um, IGTV, it has Instagram Live, and all these have kind of different features that you can kind of chop up your content and put, kind of tailor to each different feature or so. Okay, and obviously you mentioned it a, a few times just before, you know, whilst discussing Facebook and Instagram, but Twitter, how's that a good, I mean, also, I guess we're all familiar with Twitter, um, how could that be potentially used for yeah, for so, as I said, Twitter, as we know, Twitter is uh, kind of very word-based or so, but it's very... Um, it's very easy to kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Consume kind of a lot of information yeah. kind of quickly and easily with Twitter. So, you know, people scrolling through can kind of go on there for kind of 10 minutes or so and get quite a lot from it. So hmm. if that's, if Twitter is the kind of um, the preferred platform of some of your listeners, and it is for a lot of people, a lot of people have Twitter but might not have Facebook or Instagram, for example, then you don't want to, you discount it mm. in case you're kind of closing the door to them. But yeah, so Twitter, you can still um, put up images as well as your kind of videos and stuff. But obviously there is a character limit of Twitter, mm -hmm. which perhaps is a good thing because you won't spend hours slaving away over deciding what to write as your social media posts or so. It can just be a quick and easy, this is going live at this time, check us out, tune in, along with a link or so. Um, and then again, a young one, which again, I have no idea uh, what's involved in it. Um, TikTok, tell us a little bit about TikTok. So TikTok, I don't have huge amount of personal experience with TikTok either because after spending about five minutes on it once, I realised that I will spend my whole life on it if I do not <laughs> delete it very promptly. Um, but TikTok is, yeah, essentially it's a kind of a video sharing platform, I guess. But the videos are all typically quite short. So it's short form visual audio content, <laughs> essentially. Um, I think the videos are 15 seconds long. I right. may have just made that up or so, but they're, yeah, they're very short, um, shorter than what we're kind of used to having on social media. And TikTok, again, doesn't really give you many clickable links as an option. However, it is a really great way. It's so very kind of quick and easy to use. It is a really great way of kind of building a bit of hype around a show, mm -hmm. of kind of showing people very directly, oh, this is what's happening here and here and now. Kind of doing a very quick stream, essentially, of mm. saying, like, this is what's going on in our radio station. So 
yeah, it's um, it has its advantages. And also the thing about TikTok is obviously there's loads of TikTok challenges. There's where people do either dance routines or try and make food or whatever it is. Um, so TikTok can be a good way for internet radio stations to kind of engage with stuff that's going on in perhaps a particular community or engage with a group of people and kind of show what their brand's about. Yeah, I guess on that, coming off that, I guess it's, it's a creative way of essentially jumping on the bandwagon a little yeah. bit. So if there are things going around, you're like, hey, I can do that. I can, you know, it, you might see like you, some people on Twitter or Facebook might do a post or a hashtag because it's trending and you find a way to incorporate into your show or, you know, or your station. And I guess if there is a challenge, you know, a nice easy way of creating a bit of content on TikTok is joining in with the fun, I guess. And, you know, you know, if you've got uh, DJs or guests that may have their own following stuff, it's an easy way for them just to build hype for you about they're about to perform or they're going in to chat about you. Um, So, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, I guess a more creative way of, being part of the conversation in it in a really cheesy sense uh, but i mean ultimately when it comes to social media is that um it, it's something i mentioned to a lot of people you know being someone who isn't really across social media because i don't really like using it um but again i can't deny how beneficial and how 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 much uh, just how much it can improve the reach and uh you know and the appeal of your station to your audiences you know you can take it you know t- take on leaps and bounds and what i would say is if you are unfamiliar with how a particular social media platform works go and find out if you are unsure on how best to use facebook or instagram or tiktok go and find out how to do that or consult someone who you know someone younger or just a friend or a family who might have a better understanding of it do it because it you know ideally you want to make your station as accessible as possible and Mm. social media is the key to doing that Mm. um you know so spend a bit of time creating a facebook page have a little dabble in doing an instagram post or a tiktok video you know it's just kind of go out your way to jump into a realm that you may not necessarily be comfortable with yeah because it is ultimately going to be what's going to be the, at the forefront of driving interest into your into your station what kind of other ways can i guess people promote your station because uh, believe it or not before this old digital age you could actually meet people in person really so you know so what, what's a good way of i guess marketing your station in the actual real world i guess well i guess that would potentially come down to events <laughs> it's always a good shout i think um so you can either do kind of a local event or try and go a bit bigger but a local event might be a good good place to start. So kind of having, inviting your kind of DJs to come out and do like some kind of live sets or mm-hmm. any kind of bands that are involved in your radio stations. If you're not so much music focused, but you're kind of more talk radio station, you could get a panel in of like an interesting kind of panel or conversation or so that you think you want to host. And then just basically market that to, the, to your community or so. Mm. And yeah, create an event because I think that is a really great way of kind of not only getting to meet people that might be become potential listeners, but it's also people that might want to get involved in the radio station, be that they might mm. want to sponsor the radio station, they might want to volunteer themselves, they might want to engineer your shows. Like a lot of people want to get involved in radio. And yeah. I think having like an event also kind of shows that you're kind of, you're giving a little back to the community yeah you know, it's not all about yeah. taking you're not wanting a lot from people you're trying to give back to them so i think like events are really probably a really good way to to reach people outside of the social media realm yeah i've i've stumbled across somewhat i mean again the, the beauty of you know internet radio like like radio.co is you can literally broadcast from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection you can set up a radio station in the back of your car if you want to um but i i've stumbled across um um at least one station who uh were busking but instead of it being you know a a, a, a typical busker you know like a bit you of know, guitar or a singer they were just had a laptop and they were just doing their radio show Amazing. from from a uh, town shopping centre and things like you know you got people doing interest because it's not just playing music but you got you know DJ doing some links talking trying to uh, you know engage and ad lib and improv with with people walking by trying to get people involved you know I guess arguably some of it might have been a little awkward or a little cringe but that's someone getting get, putting themselves out there and it grew it, sorry it attracted a lot of media attention you know mm. people were talking about it on on twitter on facebook uh it was in the local paper so even things like that you know just make you and your station a bit more out there 
because we always forget, you know, in this digital age that, hey, once upon a time we did all meet and only talk face to face or, you know, so I think doing something a bit of a creative outreach like that or even just having a big banner and you just saying, you know, where this is the website you can go to to launch uh, while we launch the station. Here's a sticker. Here's a something, you know, it, it's just mm-hmm. getting yourself a little bit out there. So a few years ago, I did a, a webinar um, all about why podcasting is hugely beneficial to broadcasters. And the simple answer to that was really, it just opens up your audience to, uh, well, it opens up your station to a much wider audience because of, of due to a new way of consuming your content. Um, but yeah, you can take that file, you can upload it somewhere and you're instantly opening out your station to potentially millions and millions of listeners. Yeah. Chances are millions and millions of listeners may not listen to it, but that's not the point. The idea is you're making your station even more available in a arguably easier to consume way you know i can you know i'm not really going to listen to your live radio show lucy at six o'clock tonight because i'll probably be cooking my tea or putting my daughter to bed That's but okay. what i will do is i'll listen to it when everyone has gone to bed and you know it's you know 9 p.m or something like that and i'm listening to it in my you know when i feel a bit more comfortable so it's just adding again more strings to your brand's bow really you know it's just yeah. it really doesn't take much too much time to do and it can really open out your station to a lot more people in as i say in an arguably much easier to consume way so podcasting it's definitely hugely beneficial for a radio uh host especially if you want to evolve the brand of your station so lisa are you able to give us uh, i guess some tips or some examples about what kind what kind of content can work for for a station if you are promoting yourself primarily through social media what works yeah sure so if you think about a platform such as instagram what you really want to be doing is stopping the scroll so people are there they're scrolling and scrolling through instagram or so and you want them just to pause on your on your post and take in the information there so to do that you obviously need quite like visually captivating kind of content or so Mm. so need to be thinking about having kind of a very kind of visually interesting image a lot of um what's quite common at the moment is people are using like memes and gifs <laughs> and that's a great way of kind of saying firstly oh hi as a brand we know this reference this <laughs> cultural reference and also it's kind of giving other people a point of reference and they're like ah simpson's gif hello yeah or simpson's meme and then they you know they remember that episode with a a nice flush of nostalgia and they they're taking the content that you're kind of pairing with it or so yeah. you know the information about that radio station that radio show for example equally having like images of your presenters and or as you mentioned earlier like a picture of um records that is going to that are going to be played in the next hour or two stuff like that which is really visually interesting mm. is definitely obviously the way the way forward on those kind of visually centric kind of social media yeah because because i guess arguably the 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 reason behind having a facebook or an instagram page isn't to tell people what you're doing it's just to invite people to like and comment and share what you're doing because in in them doing that in your audience doing that they're giving your free your station free marketing and it opens up someone who's just shared a funny meme or a reference to something or a misheard lyric that always goes down well um you know if someone's just sharing that on facebook that's then sharing to someone else who wouldn't have found your station and they might find it funny and they share it again mm. uh you know a, a good sort of personal example was for um uh, a radio station I used to work at a number of years ago. Um, our social media pull was was pretty good, but we weren't getting sort of huge numbers until I just found a picture of I think it was Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters. Um, Superman had superimposed his head onto the head of a chef with a mixing bowl, and he just and the missed lyric was I've got another confection to bake. You know, <laughs> just um, I, forgot, I even forgot what song what Foo Fighters song it is. Um, but uh, the pretender, isn't it? I think, um, and yeah, and so th- you know that was just something really silly. We thought, okay, that works well with our demographic. You know, sort of, uh, you know, our age, the the music interest. Let's just share that, and that blew up, and that was one of the most shared, most interactive posts that we'd done for years. Um, you know, and that was something so simple. It was just we just found a funny image of a misheard lyric, and we had thousands upon thousands and thousands of people sharing it, interacting with it. That was that literally for me to find that image and post it took seconds you know i just thought it was funny and i thought hey our audience might find it funny as well because that's our demographic and it worked so you know things that make you laugh or things that um invite opinions you know things like um this is the greatest album ever prove me i'm wrong or something you know things like that you know it just gets people 
vo- um, aggressively voicing their opinions about their favorite music or their favorite TV shows and things, but it's a good way of getting people interact with me, which is so simple to do. Are there any particular broadcasters that you've spoken to or sort of work with Lucy that kind of, you feel like they've got a really good way of managing their social media or um, particular content that they do? So one um, uh, broadcaster, one internet radio station is that I've been very impressed with is Soho Radio. Um, because they do loads of really amazing different bits and bobs so they do a thing called vinyl sessions which if you're a self-professed junkie vinyl junkie like me is um, incredibly cool so they basically get musicians and artists uh, to come in and play you know a track or two of their own music or so and they then have like a little kind of mini vinyl contraption pressing plant type thing where it records the track the song that the musicians have just played and it presses it onto one off bit of like acetate essentially mm. so there's a one off record only one in the whole world of that live performance which is really cool and what Soho Radio do is they kind of take clips of that and mm. they post it onto their Instagram reels And then they also kind of take a bit of a longer clip and they put it on their Instagram videos. And then they put the full full kind of song and the full session on YouTube. So what they do is essentially they tease Instagram users because they know that they can't put the whole song Mm -hmm. or so on Instagram. So they tease Instagram users with their, oh, this is what we had in our kind of studio today. And then by teasing them in, they then get them over to YouTube to kind of engage with the content that way. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot obviously things like that is, is, is a lot of work, but what they're doing is they're repurposing that one bit of content yeah. and turning it into six different pieces of content all on different platforms and such, ultimately to lead people to their end game in a way, which is go to our YouTube channel. Um, so that's kind of it in, in terms of how you can make your station available, um, attract your audiences, how you can actually do that. But once you've got your audience, how do you keep them, really? I mean, it's it's kind of a million-dollar question, really. You don't really know how you're going to keep your audiences. Listeners, truth be told, are a fickle, a fickle bunch. So if they listen to something, they may just switch off instantly because of one single song they didn't like, and they're never going to listen to your station again. People may listen to your station from January to November. As soon as you play a bit of Christmas music, they drop out. But hey, <laughs> but hey, they might return in January. Yeah. So it's things like, you know, you're, you shouldn't be bothered about listeners dropping out or, you know, because they're always, you know, it's always a roller coaster. They're always going to be coming in and coming out. What you've got to do is just stick with your brand and what you want to do. These are a couple of points, you know, they may not necessarily apply to everybody watching, but, um, you know, it's just a good, good things to keep in mind anyway when you're doing it. So, one of the main things, it was actually the first thing I learned 14 years ago when I started studying radio was the fact that radio is an intimate, personal experience for your listener. And what I mean by that is the last thing you want to do is call your listeners guys or, hey, everybody, you know, you're not interested in everybody. You're interested in you. You know, you want people to say, we're going to be playing your favorite songs or I want you to get in touch. It's all about you've got to make your station personal because we are most likely listening to the radio with earphones on or in our own home, which is a personal space for us. So just refrain from addressing people as plural. It's all about you. Kind of, it can sound a little disheartening, but kind of present as if there's only one person listening, because, yeah. but that is a loyal listener. So that's the good way to go about it. So that's what I would do first. Um, particularly if you are going to be a local community station, you really want to be big on being hometown proud. You know, there's no point... Yeah saying that you are a local local station for the community, but you don't reference anything to do with your, your hometown, your home city. So change that. Really make sure that if you are wanting to attract the local audience, you are appealing and relevant to the, the local audience. So yeah, never shy from you know local accents or local jokes, even just yeah anecdotes that only a few people in that town are going to get. That's still being just exclusively all based in the hometown. You may very well get global people listening, which is awesome if that happens, but if you're a local station, there's no point trying to broadcast to people on the other side of the world because most likely what you're saying and doing is not relevant to them. Don't be afraid to get a niche audience because they are ultimately the, the best audiences to attract in first. So go niche and then maybe expand. But yeah, definitely a niche audience is something that you should 
look towards when starting your audience at least? Yeah, so um, when I've kind of spoken to other radio stations and kind of been working with other radio stations, there's a few common pitfalls which are so easy to fix and can be really kind of disastrous if you do. So the first one is kind of not making your radio station kind of easy to listen to. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned it before, but the amount of times when I've gone onto a website of a particular brand and I know they have a radio station, but it's just impossible to find. Yeah. And I can't find, for the love of life, I can't find any way in which I can play this radio station. And if it is just so happens that it's on a different kind of URL, different website, you just need to include that with a link and just a bit of signposting. Here, just yeah. signpost it. Just kind of look at your kind of you know, your personal website or your Facebook page or so as you, as if you're completely new to it and you haven't spent hours kind of sort of trying to sort mm. it out and just think how how is the user experience right now? How easy is it for someone just to click and hear play? Because there's no point promoting your radio station on social media and engaging with all your audiences and running events if people can't listen to it. Um, another common pitfall I have is just that sometimes radio stations aren't live when they say they're going to be live. So we we all get it. You start your radio station, you think it's great, I'm gonna broadcast 24 seven, I'm gonna have live bands, I'm gonna have DJ sets, I'm gonna have panels, discussions, and that is an incredible amount of work. So if you're starting out, my recommendation is that you kind of start small and you make sure that you kind of get everything down, get all the basics down, and then you start to expand. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing more frustrating frustrating as listeners when this radio station says it's live till 10 p.m. and you go on at 9 p.m. and it's dead air. Yeah. So to start small, be reliable. That's how you're going to you're going to build up that listener base. Because if you've di if you've um, directed people to your radio station and then you're not doing what you say you're going to do, i.e. you're not playing the certain music that you're going to say you're going to play or you're not you're not live when you say you're going to be people won't return so you know I, I talk a lot about equipment and you know I would recommend one of the first things you do is investing in a good microphone um, you know things like the what we're using short sm7b uh, they're kind of like the industry standard they're an xlr microphone they're a fantastic microphone uh, this isn't mine but I have I have one myself at home um, but they do retail for about three to four hundred pounds or you know four or five hundred dollars or so so it may not be something you want to jump into immediately but still it's good to have a good budget for a microphone so things like i would say about hundred pounds hundred dollars or so at least for a good microphone and there are plenty of companies like road shore uh, you know the blue yeti microphone is very popular with podcasters so just you spending a decent amount of money because there's no point having really tip top content and you sound terrible um you know, so invest in a good quality microphone will get rid of a lot of your, uh, I guess, presenting uh, issues. Um, if you're doing music broadcasting, consider using things like, um, or you know, uh, DJ interfaces and software just to add a bit more creativity and uh, control over your music playing. Uh, adjust the acoustics of your broadcasting space. You know, if you see behind us, we've got a lot of foam tiles. I think arguably we've gone a little overboard. There's no need to cake an entire wall or at least all four walls of your room, but put in a few here and there, let the sound bounce around. Um, you can get things like this quite cheaply off, off like Amazon, you know, for, for a little bit, for, for a half a dozen or so. Um, you know, if you don't want to spend money, why not just make sure the room you're broadcasting in has some soft furnishings, you know, yeah. uh, or uh, put some blankets around, some pillows, just to help the sound bounce around. Or if you're doing some voice recording, like I do occasionally at home, just put a duvet over my head. Kind of works. We've all been there. <laughs> um, something to consider. Consider making your station a one-stop shop. And what I mean by that is if you are trying to launch as a local station for the community, make sure you're the only station the community end up listening to. So you're providing them not just great tunes and great chat, but also potentially news bulletins or uh, reports on local sporting events, weather, travel reports. You don't need to do all of them, but you know it just means if you're catering to everyone in that community with everything they could possibly need from radio station why why would they leave your station if you're giving them all of that so something to consider um commission yourself some imaging and production so you know again something you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of uh, pounds and dollars on just something that shouts about your station you know a bit of a little 
That's pretty good, that. Um, we'll we'll take a snippet of that. Yeah. Like that. Um, but, you know, things like that, you know, just things that are shout about your station that make you sound a bit more unique and professional. You know, you're sounding like you've got some really good sounds and production for your station. Uh, okay, so the first sort of point was from uh, Max from Radio Grace FM. And he said, I tried everything, flyers, social medias, and it looks like I am missing something, but, but what is it? Um, obviously, Max, I'm not too sure if they are the only means of promoting st station that you've used, but in, in regards to those, I guess flyers, for example, in this day and age, aren't really an effective tool. Sure, people can put something in the pocket or carry something away that has your station on, but the thing that that flyer is lacking is a link people can't click on a flyer and listen to your station. You need something that takes people to your station and a flyer can't do that. A nice evolution of that is QR codes. You know, you could create instead of a flyer, a QR code for your nice. station. At least yeah. that's something, whether it's a sticker or just a piece of paper, they're on the phone, boom, there you go. That's a link to the app you've created for your station or a stream of your station. Um, Reggie at WFNKWeFunk.com um, says directories didn't work. I uh, got over 25 and maybe three listeners out of them. It's a bit of a shame when you spend a lot of time trying to promote your station, but I guess ultimately, as we discussed, directories aren't really for attracting people to. Like, directories aren't going to promote your station, are they? No. Um, they're just places that people can find your station, but ultimately, you still need to do a lot of the promotion and direct people to those places to find them. Mm -hmm. um, you did mention that they can sort of recommend people to certain stations, can't you, from, uh, from if they're listening to one station and it's relevant to yours, they can be sort of signposted to your station? Yeah, I believe so. I'd have to double check that, but I believe so. I know that you can discover radio stations in different ways based on different internet directories. So I know that you talked about Radio Garden before and that's got a really cool interface where it's basically a globe and you mm. kind of scroll around the globe and zoom in on the country and you can see it kind of, you can click on a stream based on the location of where that radio station is so that's kind of a cool way but yeah i guess because you can listen to someone from your hometown and realize oh there's another one that's nearby and stuff yeah. you know so yeah i mean it's great as i mentioned to make your station as available as possible but there's no need to necessarily be featured on every radio directory on earth because you are not going to give a link to all 25 places people can find your station so my advice there would be to pick a few uh, of the most popular ones or, or maximum 10 or so that you like um, and then direct people to one or two of them a couple of them or instead just have a website if you don't have one already uh, which, which obviously you do because I did look at it and just direct people to your website instead Charles from 22 West Radio with limited resources, I would use flyers, word of mouth at events, or post on relevant Reddit channels. Um, what didn't work, however, was promoting through Facebook ads and Mixcloud because they're just not effective these days, and it's a waste of money. Are you overly familiar with, uh, with, the, with the realm of Reddit? I have not been a Reddit person in my time or so, but I have enjoyed things that have emerged into society because yeah. of Reddit. You know, I've enjoyed various funny threads and stuff like that, but um, I, yeah, I don't use Reddit personally that often. No, but I've got a good way of doing it is if you've got a particular guest coming in or, you know, say, for example, I don't know, uh, um, you've got a, a blues musician coming in to, to do a show. You know, there'll be a Reddit subreddit of blues or maybe even dedicated to the era of blues music this guy's playing or, mm -hmm. um, or maybe a Reddit page dedicated to this particular person you know so the idea is just it's it's a way of just promoting your station to a very direct people so it you know it's it's kind of like you're appealing to that niche audience that you are ultimately trying to appeal to we also have ralph from wesn epic strategies network uh, he says he's using the Podbean app as it helps drive people to his radio station as the Podbean app has built-in live chats to interact with your audience which is good. And obviously the great appeal of that, which I see obviously Ralph clearly sees, um, it's a much more attractive way of getting people invested in your station if they can be part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And it also means you don't have to rig up a phone line. Hmm. I think perhaps the kind of the days of people calling into radio stations might be might be dwindling somewhat, I'm not entirely sure. However, the idea of just kind of being in a kind of a live chat room that is definitely um, shown that it's kind of still quite popular in the form of, you know, you can do it on YouTube, you can do it on Twitch, you can do it on kind of Facebook Live. I'm pretty sure you can kind of 
uh, kind of comment as it's happening or so. So I think the function of having a kind of a live chat at the time is really great for radio stations. Yeah, particularly seeing it's something that we mentioned towards the start is that you're attracting people to your station who are already on the internet. So if mm. they're on on your app, you know, and this Podbean app, for example, listening to your station, chances are they can also then just open it up and send a send a text in things so um yeah so, so so it's really good that's a really great way of getting people invested if they know that hey i can voice my opinion during this song or i can get involved mm. uh if, if you want live callers using something like this what we've got the roadcaster pro um uh, desk um has bluetooth functionality so you can actually hook a mobile phone to it and do calls through that way as well so that's a, a nice easy way of doing it um regarding apps in general so we're releasing some brand new apps in the coming months Woo! Um, and uh, one of the features that we'll have, there will be a, a message feature on there. So not like a live chat, but it will have direct links to sending people a, an email, even a text if you make your number on there, um, you know, Facebook posts and things. So there is a way to interact live whilst a show is on. So stay tuned for those. Uh, and then the last one before we do finish um, comes from Alex from uh, Johnston Sounds. Um, she says, for us being a small community station, we've used the local press to cover events and future events and have developed a good relationship with the local council to help broadcast news before it's even published. Uh, we are also part of a business consortium that helps us not only find listeners, but local businesses that are interested in advertising with us. Finally, we rely on our team to promote each other at every chance they get. Wow. So a lot of really great success yeah. stories there from Alex. So, uh, so I guess... Take it from Alex's point, it's something that I've um, mentioned a lot, I'm going to reiterate it again now, is if you are wanting to be a local community station, get involved with the local community. Um, and getting things like the local press on board, local council on board, you know, that's that's you being, I mean, I guess Alex can't really be more involved in the community there. So, you know, he's got yeah. an outlet for news, he's got an outlet for um you know, public appeal and, uh, you know, and uh, cross promotion with local councils and news. Um, networking, attending business business to business meetings as well is something that actually I didn't really think of. Um, but it's something that can be great, you know, not just for listeners, but as he says, about attracting local advertisers. So you, some of you may still have these questions in mind about, um, you know, exactly how we can do A, B and C. But, you know, if you have any particular questions or thoughts on what we've discussed, then please send me an email. That's studio at radio.co. And ultimately, you know, we, we've just tried to provide a little bit of some some tips, some do's and don'ts, some uh, some guidance about how you can make your station available and ultimately how you can attract an audience. So I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, Lucy, have you enjoyed it? I've enjoyed myself greatly, Phil. Thank yes. you very much. It's been great. And I must say the same as well. Uh, you know, I've enjoyed you having here, Lucy. So thank you very much for, for joining me. And uh, thank you very much for, for checking us out. And again, any questions, any issues, or you were just intrigued about launching your online radio station with us, you can go to radio.co. Um, you can reach us out, studio at radio.co. Just... Have a chat. See what we can do to help. Yeah, or well, feel free to reach, reach out to us on social media as well. Of course, I'll get, because it kind of goes back to what we've been talking about. We do promote a lot of stuff on social media, so come <laughs> and reach do. out to us on social and media. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> That's probably a bit more fitting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, whatever you do, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, yeah, happy broadcasting. Hey, I'm James, founder of Radio.co. Before you go anywhere, I've got an interesting question for you. Do you know the difference between a radio station that launches and becomes very successful, gets lots of listeners and does very well, and a radio station that perhaps kind of doesn't launch very well and disappears within a few months, doesn't really get much attention. Well, I've put together a checklist which will illustrate to you in a very simple way the five key differences between radio stations that launch do well versus radio stations that launch and kind of disappear. You can download your free copy over at radio.co slash checklist today. Find out exactly how you can make the most out of your radio station. That's radio.co slash checklist. Go and grab your free copy. I'll see you there.